So what does the world know about Las Vegas? Maybe you think we're a city simply designed to entertain the world, but we're much more than that. We're a community full of families, schools, churches, and commitment. And on the worst day in our city's history, that commitment was at its strongest. Now this ain't Detroit City. It ain't the Windy City or New York City. This city is strong, Vegas strong. For the last 30 years, I have prepared myself. I have persevered and I have weathered the storm so that one day, this day, I could share my dream, my vision, my show. To bring hope and relief, to bring entertainment, news, and information to you my way. Doing well by doing good. To those in Africa, Rome, Asia, Argentina, Brazil, Australia, even the Maldives, and all across America, I thank you for following me on my journey. This is What's Next, The M.O.J. Show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Monica Jackson. Four years and I never get nervous. I need a Tito's and Grand Marnier right now. <laughs> but first and foremost, giving honor to God, who is truly the head of my life, I want to say thank you to all of you for coming out. You didn't have to do it, and I appreciate it. I want to tell you all right now that this is not my dream. This goes way beyond what I dreamt about when I was 13 years old. I've always wanted to be a television news anchor. I breathed it, I drank it, I ate it. I knew that this was what I wanted to be. So fast forward to my anointed career. Started in Detroit. And it's been one heck of a journey. I have been so blessed through the ups, through the downs, and you need the downs to appreciate all the ups. And I ended up here in Las Vegas as a result of my husband's Air Force career. And I thought never in my wildest dreams would I end up in Las Vegas. In fact, my mom and her friends from Chrysler <coughs> used to come here every year. And we could never go. My sisters and I, we always had to stay at home. <laughs> and I said, Lord, I can't wait to be a grown-up. I remember sitting in the bathroom mirror. I can't wait to be a grown-up so I can go to Vegas. <laughs> and here I am. So after 14 years in the last couple months, my husband and I had a decision to make. And he said, babe, you've been talking about this for over a year. You're tired of it. Getting up at 3 a.m., hair, makeup, dress, ladies, spanks. <laughs> it's time to do your own thing. And I was like, yeah, but I don't know. My husband's dreams scare me to death. When I met him when I was 15 years old, he always said, he kept saying it, you're the next Oprah. I'm like, 
I'm good sitting at the anchor desk. I don't need to do what Oprah does. Oprah is hella fine, you know. You talk about doing Oprah, you talk about making magic happen. You talk about miracles, right? So, fast forward to just a couple months ago, we sat down, we had the conversation. And he said, you ready to pull the trigger? And I said, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. And ladies, you know, as women, when we say we're done with something, you know that R. Kelly song, when a woman's fed up, there ain't nothing you can do about it. I was done. And my former news director is sitting here, Christy. Uh, she was done too. <laughs> and I remember when the contract came my way, it was said, basically, you can take it or leave it. And so here I am with all of you. I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe this happened. Because my husband's crazy, wild dreams. <laughs> But I'm so glad and so grateful that we did it. And I'm glad and grateful that you all are here with me on this journey. I thank you so much. Let's get the show started. So my first guest, um, I call him the man who owns the mountain. You all know him. And I'm not joking, y'all know he owns the mountain. <laughs> We've been members of this, of uh, Dragon Ridge Country Club for several years now. And when we uh, started talking about doing the podcast, um, I'm not sure who was involved in that process of making that decision, but I'm pretty sure some people who probably won't tell me that they, they did. But um, they said, do it here. And Delana was like, babe, Rich McDonald said we could do it there. I was like, we could do it there at the club? This is great! So ladies and gentlemen, I'll finish the story, but I want to introduce to you the man who created, who built, who developed this community, McDonald Highlands. He has become a man that we admire so much and appreciate so much, Mr. Rich McDonald. You need some water? Good. You can say anything you want. If you feel like cussing right now, you can. He's, he's incredible. <laughs> Carry you. <laughs> All right, everybody. So um, I wanted to start out this podcast, this series, with letting everybody know about Las Vegas because in the open, as you saw, I think most people think that we're just about the Las Vegas Strip. I see you. And I wanted to let people know we're much more than that. Sadly, after 1 October, that's when people actually started noticing Las Vegas, oh, it's a real city. You guys have churches and schools. I'm like, what do you think we do? Hang out on the strip 24 seven. You guys get that, right? You live here? So starting with uh, Rich McDonald here who developed uh, McDonald Highlands, the story behind it is so amazing to me because he did something that a lot of people uh, didn't have the nerve and probably still don't have the nerve to do. Most people would get arrested for it. <laughs> It's Rich, true. I wanted to start with you um, and to uh, share your story with us about how McDonald Highlands came to be, how you did what you did, and moving forward, what your vision is as a developer. Give us a little bit of your background. Oh, my background? Yeah. Different. <laughs> actually, actually, I was uh, I had a strange family. When they, when they would take a vacation, you had a 50-50 shot whether you'd move there. And because that's how we got to Las Vegas. They took a vacation. All of us came to Las Vegas. Yeah. My father found himself uh, shooting craps with Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., you know, Dean Martin, the, the rock stars of their day, basically. And they thought they died and went to heaven. Mm -hmm. So a year to the date that they came here the first time with all of us, we were all moved back. We went back east to Philadelphia. They sold everything, put everything, all the worldly goods were in a U-Haul trailer behind my dad's Cadillac drove across the country, moved here in 1959. There were 60,000 people living in the whole valley, wow. which included Boulder yeah. City. 
Yeah. Yeah. I have more than that in my neighborhood back east. I think. <laughs> but in any event, it was it was culture shock, mm -hmm. and uh, we had to go to school. We were dressed in pretty contemporary clothes back east. Yeah. They thought that was the best thing going. I thought they were terrific because they could wear jeans to school. Yeah. So I got my Levi's, I think, the second day here, and I was wearing them. <laughs> yeah. The rest of the stuff stayed in the back of the closet. But but that's actually how we come to we came to find out about hillside development. Yeah. Was they took a trip to Hawaii, we ended up there, and I went to visit them for a summer vacation and stayed for twenty years. <laughs> so it, it it was one of those issues that, yeah. and I got into real estate in Hawaii, and I learned all about hillsides. Yeah. And if you if you couldn't do the beach, then you know you live in the mountains. It was better. Yeah. Let's fast forward to Vegas and what you did here in Henderson, because folks, this is the part of the story where I thought, I've talked to Rich before. I'm like, have you lost? Your, are you kidding me? It's one of those moments when you have an, uh, a conversation with somebody like this who's seen Las Vegas unfold and build and build and build. Talk about how you came to Henderson, what you decided to do to make this whole community happen, to make McDonald Highlands happen. Well, my, my family and I bought property. My father came up with this great idea. Let's buy property in, in Las Vegas and sell it to people in Hawaii. Everyone in Hawaii loves Las Vegas. That's why they call this the Ninth Island. Yeah. So we did, we found property. We, put a, we didn't have enough money to buy it all, but we, we had two sections, two square miles. We put investment groups together to get the down payment money together, mm -hmm. and then we started selling it. And I mean, no one told us we couldn't do that, so we, we did it and we accomplished it. Yeah. We sold tons of this property, and I got the great idea, why don't we keep some of it and we'll develop it? Okay, so we did. We yeah. kept a bunch of it. And then I, I stumbled into downtown Henderson once, which had two trailers, maybe three or four trailers for the public works department. <laughs> And on the side of, of that was, was, were some maps. I said, what's that? And they said, oh, that's property that's right next to your property. Yeah. And I said, oh, well, is it for sale? And they said, yeah, it's property that Greenspun didn't buy. His engineers said it was too rough to develop. Well, I could read topo maps pretty well, and I saw this and started to salivate. But I'm trying to be nonchalant and casual about it. Said, well, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe we'll be interested in that. Let me, yeah. let me take a look at it. Uh, and I did, and I ended up, the family didn't want to buy it. They said, we have enough land. So I said, well, I'll buy it. I'm going to buy it. So that was like 700 and some odd acre, acres. And yeah. We'd already bought four sections before that. So we ended up with almost 4,000 square miles of, yeah. or 4,000 acres, rather, of, of land. Of land. Okay, here's where it gets good, folks. Stephanie Road, a lot of you drove in on Stephanie, right? Let's fast forward to Stephanie and how it came to be, Rich, well, there in was, the development there, process. There was... There was the land in front of us was cut into 10 acre parcels. The Green Valley Company needed some cash flow, and that's how they basically raised it. Yeah. They got a great cash flow from it. But unfortunately, in their haste, they never thought about how do you actually get into this area because there was no direct way to get in. Yeah. Except for Green Valley Parkway, which was Lamb Boulevard back then. Mm -hmm. uh, and I came up with the idea one afternoon why don't we just take the road, the section line road, which is now Stephanie, and bulldoze it in? And um, without getting into some of the details of my yeah, relationship right. with the city, which has always been a little stormy. Yeah, um, that's the part that could get us in trouble. That's, well, that's all right. It's going to be in the book. But, but the bottom line is uh, I, I, I hired a guy with a bulldozer yeah. and a blade. And on a Saturday and Sunday when no one was working, there was no one from the city around, I bladed the road in from what was then the Henderson cutoff up to the gate that we all drive in today. And beyond, actually. Actually, almost to the corner up here, where McDonald Ranch Boulevard insects, uh, yeah. you know, intersects. Uh -huh. But um, So that, that happened over two days, and then I got a call from one of the property owners. He says, hey, Rich, he says, do you know anything about this road that was put in? <laughs> and I said, road? You mean like on the alignment of Stephanie? Yeah. And he said, yeah, yeah. I said, well, gee, that's, that's a section line road. He said, yeah, it is. It would be. I said, that probably would give you a higher density zoning, wouldn't it? Maybe commercial or apartment or something? He says, yeah, 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 I guess it would. That's good. I says, I guess whoever put that road in did you a favor then. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I guess they did. I says, are your, are your, are your pins still in the, in the road for the yeah. corner sections? He says, oh, yeah, they're all there. I said, oh, well, that's good. Well, good, then I guess you're doing good. I wish I had some of that. <laughs> he said, no, I, I'm glad I have it. That's yeah. going to be good. It's, it's now part of a shopping center. 
Ladies and gentlemen, what he did not say is he did not ask permission. He bulldozed the road and they found out later that this man, I said, Rich, we were talking about this. I said, you got to tell this story. I said, do you know anybody else would have ended up in jail? He was like, yeah, well, you know, it didn't happen. And it, you know, I just be so nonchalant about this. I'm like, I'm freaking out. But fast forward again, um, Rich, to the, the development started. And, you know, we can't name the folks who live here because they live here as a result of the privacy that they get. But there are some great names that live here. And talk about developing homes because he just started a new project called VIEW. Right? Uh, that's Christopher Holmes. That's Christopher Holmes, right. But that's here. So that is here. Absolutely. So all of the homes that you see are custom. And one of the reasons that I really wanted this to be part of the podcast is that a lot of folks who are moving to Las Vegas, you think you see a beautiful community like this, you can't afford to live here. Actually, you can. View is beautiful. A lot of young professionals are moving in. And if you're coming to Las Vegas, if you're watching this podcast, this is one of the best. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, the community that you're in now has been dubbed the New Hollywood Hills. So this is where you are right now, and um, it's a wonderful place to be. And I also want to talk about the club that you're in right now. It's called Dragon Ridge Country Club. And this place, when it comes to socializing and having a good time and just chilling and laying back, you might see celebrities walk in one day. You know, for those of you who followed me, um, you know I'm a Michael Jackson-like fanatic, right? <laughs> I'd get arrested if I met him again. I almost did the first time, but that, you know. Anyway, but one day we're sitting at the bar just outside here, and I see a familiar face. Now, most of the folks who are members of the club, they're used to it, but we were pretty new, and all of a sudden I see a guy who looks so familiar, and I look, I said, well, now I know I had a couple of Tito's and, and Grand Marnier, but what's that? Then I looked again, and Delano was like, hey, don't. I'm like, that was Jackie Jackson! <laughs> that was Michael's brother! So I got really excited, but again, the privacy that you get here, the luxury, the affordability. Now there's some, Rich, with, let's just be honest, most of us who like do nine to fives, you know we can't afford that big old building that looked like a hospital way up at the top. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, you know, what you're doing here is building homes, building communities. And I think it's really important for people to know because everybody thinks of Las Vegas as a place to play, but we live here. We raise our kids here. Our kids go to school. We have families. We go to church here. What was in your mind, Rich, when you were developing this place and seeing all these big houses and the big celebrities coming through? Was it what you envisioned or was it more? Tell me about that part. Well, the, the interesting thing is exactly as I envisioned it. Yeah. The whole community is developed almost like we planned it back in 1986, mm -hmm. and it uh, and it almost is identical. And and the, the focus is really the people that are in the community. Yeah. That's what makes it special. Yeah. I mean, there's something about the place I mm -hmm. think that just attracts nice people. Yeah. Because realistically, you could count on one hand the people that you wouldn't want to hang out with that live in this community. Mm -hmm. Everybody here is terrific. Yeah, yeah. What's one of your most memorable moments building and or just hanging out here at Dragon Ridge? Probably the interaction with the people that are here. Because yeah. what's interesting, I mean, I blood, sweat, and tears, a lot of my blood, sweat, and tears went into this place. Yeah. So I'm really attached and obviously a little biased, mm -hmm. more than a little biased. But... But when I see other people that live here that feel like I do, yeah, oh, that's that's the most that's the best reward. Changes can, things, doesn't it? Big time. Yeah. Okay, so folks, I want to get down to some fun facts here. You guys can share with folks that even if you've lived here for a while, I'm learning that as I talk to a lot of folks, they don't know that these are you know those little oh my god kind of facts about Dragon Ridge and about McDonald Highlands. So the first one is okay, Rich, you ready for this? I need you to tell everybody about the vortex and what it is. Okay, we had we had some we had some home buyers that wanted to come up and have their feng shui master come in and analyze the community. Sounds and I said, interesting. I said, okay, I've been I've been to the area a whole lot. Lived in Hawaii, went to Hong Kong and China a lot of times, and so I'm pretty familiar with feng shui. But I, I, I met this gentleman, and he wasn't Chinese. He was he was a Greek man. <laughs> it's Demetrius Castle. Goes by Dr. Phineas today, teaches at UNLV. Yeah. He's the one that tells the MGM Grand you have to change your architecture to get mm -hmm. people to come in. Remember when they used yes, to go through the that. mouth of the yeah. of the lion? Yeah. That's not good for, for feng shui. So anyway, he comes up and he says, now, I have some equipment with me. Can some of your people go up with me 
and hold the equipment. I said, sure. So I, I called a couple of the guys and I said, go up with him and, and walk this. And he's looking for a vortex, whatever that is. So, and, and I really had a little bit of a, a hint of, as to what a vortex was, but not much. Just a few trips to Sedona. Mm -hmm. But in any event, he goes up there and he finds this vortex energy source. And, and, he, and my guy said, you know, when we hit this thing, this spot, all these dials start spinning. And he said, so there has to be something to it because nothing was, but, uh, you know, my theory is anyone that can get three to 6% out of a Chinese developer knows, <laughs> knows there's something important going yeah. on there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because I've got a lot of friends that are Chinese from Hawaii. They don't part with the dollar very quickly. 6% to 3%, there's something there. Yeah, yeah. And, and we found this thing and we said, okay, let's build a little platform around it uh -huh. so that people that are into that can go up there, they can meditate, they can just sit there. A lot of us have hiked up there. Yeah, a lot of people do. So if you're fitness, into that, yeah, it's, a lot it's of nice people go. Hike. Yeah. And it's right at the base of one of the, one of the, oh, he also told us we have three we have three dragons, not, not one. Right. I thought we had one. No, there are three. three dragons here. So you can go and meditate and get your feng shui on and all of that. I'm never going because I'm not going up the mountain and I'm scared of everything. So anyway, thank you, Rich. Okay, everybody pull out your phones. It's going to be fun. Rich, you don't have to do it because you own the joint. So I, I, I left my phone in the car. <laughs> I was afraid my wife would call. Okay, you guys ready? So I need you to text your name and the last, I'm sorry, the first letter of your last name. Your first name and the first letter of your last name to this number. It's 702-528-0605. That's 702-528-0605. Text your first name and the first letter of your last name. You guys got it? Okay. All right, cool. So hold on. At the end, we got a little something, something for you. Okay, so we're going to keep on with these fun facts about McDonald Highlands and what Mr. McDonald here did. There's a house here, and if you, like, take a tour through uh, the community, there's a house that looks like it's one, maybe two, maybe three, maybe four homes. But there's significance to this home. Now, Rich, do you remember the home I asked you about? And it was the longest home. Do you want to tell everybody about that one? Yes. Lady that, the lady that built this home bought three lots, three one-acre lots, put them all together, and she, she wanted, said she wanted to expunge the lot lines so that it was one big lot. And it was golf course frontage, and it was going to be a single-story house. Well, it turns out it's the biggest single-story house in the state, maybe in several states. Yep. And... And it's one story, and as it was being framed, people kept saying, why is Rich allowing them to build a, a school right on the golf course? <laughs> the, the kids are gonna get hit with golf balls. And I have to explain, it's not a school. It's, yeah. as, it's as long as a school, but it's, right. you know, and, and it just keeps going, going and going and going. So it's, it's a huge place. Yeah. And uh, two people live there. There are only two living in that house. Mm -hmm. And they used to ride around on, um, Golf carts to move around, and then later they use those. Um, what are those? The hover rounds the, or those, the, those the segway. Segway, the segways. Segways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can never remember the name. That's what what they used to transport themselves with through the house. Two people and in this house. And they had the greatest yeah. parties ever. Yeah. They're always costume parties. Come as you are. Yeah. Come as you want to be. Come as you were. I mean, there are all kinds you, of different things. This is a fun place. place to hang out, folks. Even if you don't live here, it's fun in here. All right. So also, okay, do you know the fact about 89012, this area code? Which you want part? me to tell you? Sure. I mean, the zip code, rather. Zip code. Ladies and gentlemen, you are sitting in the highest net worth per capita zip code in Southern Nevada. This is where the super wealthy move to. And again, for privacy's sake, we can't say a lot of names here, but... Trust me, I've met them the super wealthy. It's, it's actually the seventh largest in the country. In the country. Yeah, which saves something. You got fancy friends, but you know what that means, Rich. That means I'm just going to be hitting you up for more money for my charities. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. <laughs> that happens a lot. It's going to happen. Okay. So I want to tell you this, because I, I just did my homework on, on this, and Rich, you already know this, but McDonald Highlands is seen in many cultures as the energy vortex of Las Vegas, where money and power originate 
for the valley. So in other words, folks, a lot of the money that comes out of this particular community funds a lot of charities, funds a lot of businesses. Again, a lot of individuals that you would never think live here have moved here, and they make a big difference in our valley. And again, if you all have watched me, you know that charity is a big deal for me because to whom much is given, much is required. When we have this sort of platform, I do believe we all will be held accountable. So when you have it and you know that there is a need, there is a need that all of us must fulfill. That's just who I am. All right, so, and the real estate office wanted me to let everybody know that <laughs> some of the highest record-breaking residential sales in all of Las Vegas have occurred right here in McDonald Highlands. Yes. That's true. Record-breaking. Kristen, Kristen hooked me up. She gave me all that info. So Rich, before we wrap up this segment, I wanted to make sure that I gave you the platform because again, you guys opened your arms to us when we decided that we wanted to do a podcast. Anything else you want uh, this audience to know about this beautiful community? Boy, where do you start? Um, no, I, I, just, I just love it here. I live here. Most people don't. Most developers don't live in their communities because if there's issues, they don't want to have to deal with them. And we do. Yeah. I think what makes this community a little nicer to live in is if there's a problem, there's someone who doesn't have to go up to corporate to get an answer. You get a question answered, you get it taken care of, and it gets fixed immediately. Yeah. And it's, it's just a wonderful place to live, and it's full of wonderful people. And uh, we are truly blessed for everything that's happened. Absolutely. And we are so blessed to be a part of it. Thank you so much. Such a pleasure chatting with you. Love it. And he does hang out in the club. Hey, baby. Hey. How was Vegas? Oh, my gosh. So much fun. Yeah? Yeah, I have pictures. Is that a sketchbook? Yeah. Finally putting my art major to use. And there's the pool. <laughs> the club. <laughs> it's the after party. <gasps> Selfie! I have so many selfies in here. Yeah. Oh, shopping. Oh, she's gonna hate that picture. She looks terrible. Certainly not least. Um, Y'all know that song, Your Love Keeps On Lifting Me, right? His son is here. Jackie Wilson's son is here. And if you know what Jackie Wilson looks like, you don't even have to guess twice. There he is right there. That's Bobby Brooks Wilson. <laughs> and he has his shows up and down the Las Vegas Strip. Right, Bobby? Yeah. And the movie? We got a movie coming out? Do I get the exclusive here on my podcast? That, that's a promise in front of all these people, right? Don't make me take you to the vortex. <laughs> all right, folks, so hey, without further ado, I want to introduce you guys to this young man. This is Grant Peacock. Please give him a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Grant was on the show, um, and again, you guys know, I keep it real no matter where I am. This young man came up in that Gibson showroom, and when you come on a morning show, you gotta bring it. We don't wanna hear nothing about, oh, I need five more hours for my voice to warm up. We like, bye, Felicia. We don't wanna hear all of that. This is a live show. We need you to be singing or playing or leaving, right? Grant came on and killed it. He killed it. And if you know anything about jazz music, Brian Culbertson, uh, Najee, yeah, I've interviewed all of these guys. This young man is all about that. So I want you to talk a little bit, Grant, about where you come from, how all this started. 
I started, uh, we scanned some, you know, radio stations. We were back in Southern California, and of course you might know uh, 94.7 The Wave, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. So before they, they kind of started doing more R&B, you know, kind of ballady stuff, they were really heavy into the Brian Culbertson, Boney James, the real jazz mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, so that's kind of my earliest memories of hearing smooth jazz, and I uh, really picked up on it. And just, I mean, I really uh, kind of came up with my own phrasing, my own kind of ideas, and here I am today playing some smooth jazz in Las Vegas. So. Is that cool? yeah. Yeah. You can catch this young man all over Vegas. I'm going to step away from you, Brand. I do like you, and I love this jacket. <laughs> he, he asked when we were setting all this up, he's like, so what are you wearing? I said, I don't know, but you need to bling. Just come on and do it. This is Vegas, right? He said, okay. I said, I'm wearing red. He said, okay, I'll be wearing red. I said, Grant, make it memorable. You know, and you, you can talk to you can talk to Bobby Brooks Wilson. He has some of the flyest clothes ever. Ask him if you can borrow some. Of his oh, I clothes. bet. Look at this yeah. jacket. I know. Look at the jacket, yeah. right? <laughs> so, uh, Grant, without further ado, tell us what you're going to play and how you came up with it, real quick. All right. Well, I'm going to play a um, rendition of actually a hip hop song. It's uh, originally "Summertime" Will Smith. Yeah. And. Uh, it's like a, I came up with my own kind of real jazz, funky, bluesy version of it. Yeah. And I actually have a guest singer, uh, Cena Foley over there. It's going to be Come coming on. up to Ms. give us some vocal. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah, you saw her. Yeah, you saw her. All right, Miss Cena Foley, Foley, come on up. I'll step out of the way. Ladies and gentlemen, Grant Peacock. Yeah. Good to see you again. Yeah. Let's just sit back and do 
gentlemen, I, I'm terribly sorry. I'm not from here. Oh, there's so much to do in Las yeah. Vegas. Did it work, William? Uh, no. But we should keep trying, yes? It's the moment you see it for the very first time. The moment that transforms you from casual spectator to die-hard fan. It's the people you meet. The times that inspire you. That incredible feeling when you start to believe. In that moment, a lot can happen. Smelling the food. It would not be a talk show without the food going on. This is the guy who'll be cooking the meal. You got Ladies and gentlemen, Chef Eric. <laughs> All right. And so Chef Eric and I have not talked. He told me that he was going to be, you know, cooking up a meal, some cool stuff. I said, you know, bring something hearty so that when people, you know, eat it or order it, when you leave here and go into the grill, you'll know what you're ordering, right? I didn't do that. Yeah. We got two appetizers. <laughs> He's so nervous, so I want you guys to be nice to him. He's never done this before. He's a little nervous, but let me tell you this. This man is formally trained at Le Cordon Bleu. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so thank you for hanging out at the inaugural MOJ show. Sure. I appreciate it. I'm going to come on this side of you. Is that okay, JT? Can I go on that side of him? Yeah. I can? Okay. I'm going to go on this side of you. So first of all, Tell everybody what you do here, how you came to Vegas real quick. Well, I'm from Southern California, a uh, small little telling marine base, 29 Palms. Uh, came out here in 2006, went to Le Cordon Bleu. My family was out here um, at that time, my dad. Yeah. So said, come on out, go to school. And I was here two months later. And after that, I went to Southern Highlands for a little bit and went in the Pacific Lynx ring and South Shore and here next. I've been here for four and a half years. All right. Very good, very good. All right. And I love it here. And he loves it here. You didn't hear that, folks. Okay, so I want you to tell everybody what you're whipping up tonight because I see crab meat, some seafood. What's up? Yeah, so I like doing stuff a little bit light. We're going to start off with some with a hot appetizer and a cold appetizer. Okay. So we have the uh, crab maison, which in, means uh, house salad. So that's basically it. It's from New Orleans. It was, it was uh, first made in New Orleans. And our sous chef, Big John, he used to work at this place that made this. So okay. A little light crab, a little aioli that we make in house, and then we're doing a pork belly adobo. Um, my wife's Filipino, this is a Filipino dish, a staple, so this is one of my favorite dishes that we have on the menu, and it's kind of like a fusion kind of thing, which, what, which I like to do around right Okay, here. all right, let's get it started. Do you need my help? Because I can really I cook. <laughs> Her first word is like, I can't cook. Yeah. <laughs> when we were talking, I was like, please, Lord, I hope you know what you're doing, because I can't help. <laughs> you just throw some stuff together, it'll be cool. Okay, all right, so what are we doing here? So let's start off with the crab maison. Yeah. So we're going to, okay. we got the house made aioli right here. Okay. So we're going to load all this stuff in there right now. That's, okay. that's your job, because that's I'm putting my, you to work. I can't do that. I got to hold the mic for you. See? <laughs> that's how you I'm always doing all the work around here. Time. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we'll do it. So okay. we have parsley here, a little bit. We have a house aioli that we have in here. You want me to pull this down here? A little bit closer? Sure. Yeah, because okay. you were supposed to do it. But. I was <laughs> you saying you were supposed to do it. We got some green okay. onion here, scallion. Green onions. Okay. A little bit of Creole mustard. Ooh, this smell, can you guys smell all this? Yeah. That smells good, doesn't it? Yeah. A little bit of capers for the saltiness. We're going to keep going. Got some olive oil. All right, so we're okay. going to mix this a little bit together. OK. You mix make, it in make together. It a, make it all one. So this, that is looks our, good. this is our base that's gonna go with the crab. So not okay. to overpower the crab, um, just to accentuate a little bit. And now okay. we got our jumbo lump crab here. Ooh. Now one thing that's important about this is you don't want to over mix it because you pay okay. a lot of money for that jumbo lump and you just want to kind of just put it all together. Rich, I think you should add this to the menu, just jumbo lumps of crab. <laughs> jumbo lump of anything is good. Your wife would love it? Yeah, okay. Oh, this looks good. And that's how easy it is. That's how easy it is? So we're okay. gonna plate this up now a little bit. You're gonna plate it up? I'm gonna scoot you down. Okay, what you got? Wait, make, you know what? If you're this. cooking, I guess we need people up here, don't we? Oh, yeah. We do? How, how, how are we doing that, creative director, JT? Creative yeah. director, JT. Uh, who's hungry? You gonna pick someone? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see some hands. And, and Melissa, are you hungry? Yeah, come on up here. Come on up here. You gotta try it, right? You now, try Rich, it. I know that you're watching your figure. You're working out and doing your thing. Looking good. You want to come up here and taste it too? You're under, okay, Rich, come on up. 
So, Alyssa, just stand right here. Hi, how are you? How's Floyd? Am I going to get him on the show? Uh, yeah, of course. We're going to make that happen. Just get that in real quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rich, come on over on this side so we can get you on camera. Okay. So, you're plating it up right now. We have extra ports for our guests here, Eric. That would have been good, huh? That would have been good. <laughs> I told you, he is nervous. This is his I'm not first nervous time. anymore. I'm good now. He's not, you're not nervous now. No, I'm Why are you of... shaking it? No, I'm kidding. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Okay, now, okay, Melissa, you've been eating all over the world. Rich, you have too. Like, is this one of your favorites when it comes to seafood? The crab? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? Definitely. I actually don't eat beef, pork, or chicken, so. Oh, it's this perfect, perfect for you. Yeah. I do yeah. have okay. a spoon here. You do have a spoon? Okay. All right, so, ladies first. Melissa, we want you to taste it and tell everybody the truth because if they're talking about booking a wedding here and there are some friends who are engaged. Don't here. tell the truth. It just say it's good. Just, it just, like just eat it just like that. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. a little bit of the crab right there. Yeah. Tell the truth. It's Fresh. Really good. Good. Really good. Really good. Yeah. Very good. I'll pay you later. Again? That's a crab maison salad. <laughs> crab maison. Okay, Rich. She doesn't. He doesn't do it. He doesn't do anything. Okay, Rich, you tell us. It. Now, just because you're the owner, you don't have to say it's good. He knows everything, though. He knows. Mm. <laughs> good? Is it good? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Because if it was, Rich would be in there like, we need to redesign the menu. Fire, we fire need that guy. <laughs> He's got a great menu. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, sir. Love the menu. I appreciate it. Okay, that. thank you, Melissa and Rich. We appreciate it. Okay, so that's the first one. You got a second right. one here, right? We got one more coming up. We got one more coming up. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, who wants to try this? What's the name of this one? This is a pork belly adobo. Pork belly adobo. In other words, it's big fat bacon. <laughs> who is that back there? I can't see you. Raise your hand first. Which is that, Cheryl? Come on over, Cheryl. All right, let's get somebody from this side. Who wants to come on? Over? Come on. So, guys, we got another one here for you, and this is pork belly. And tell everybody, like, the origins of this one again, uh, Chef Eric. Um, well, this is from the Philippines, the Filipino dish. My wife's Filipino, and this is one of my favorites because we're taking a little bit of fusion that we have going on. So we're taking, which Filipino cuisine, that's what it is. It's yeah. Spanish, it's all kinds of stuff together. Mm -hmm. So the crispy rice cakes that we're going to put that on has a little furikake, which is a rice seasoning, and also has a little bit of a togarashi, which is a, a, a Japanese spice seasoning. So we made cakes out of that. We braise off our pork tip, our pork uh, belly. Yeah. And we're gonna just crisp it up a little bit. Okay. Add a little bit of uh, our sauce. So Filipino food is a lot of vinegar and a lot of soy sauce. Okay. But when you put the things together in the right amount, mm -hmm. it's just it's amazing. So I've come to love it a little bit. So. Okay. Well, you better. Your wife is Filipino, my friend. You got no chance. Well, I know how to lie sometimes, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, so while he's uh, sizzling that up, I want to let you guys know, again, if you are looking for a party venue, a wedding venue, anything here, you can find it here at McDonald Highlands. They have a great uh, real estate office, and you can check out some of the new properties. And if you build one of those big houses with 17 rooms in it on the uh, mountain, all the only requirement is that you invite me to all your parties. <laughs> but it, and your development, right? Yeah. So make sure you guys check it out if you have any questions. There are a lot of folks here on hand, or you can call uh, the number there uh, from the um, the receptionist office. I think they're closed right now, but Larry and Brandy are back there, so make sure you check with them if you guys are interested. Okay, are we all sizzled up, Chef? Yes, we okay. are. All right. You have good timing. I do? Yeah. Yeah. I've been doing this a little while. <laughs> Just a little while. We got pork. Look at that. That creative director. Wait till I wait till I tell you guys about him. You're not gonna believe this. You're not gonna believe this. Okay, all right, here's a fork for you, Dominic the Banker and Miss Cheryl Burns. Ladies and gentlemen, Cheryl didn't tell y'all everything. If uh, I'm just gonna tell it. She hangs out with all of the NFL players. She does business with them. So Rich, there are gonna be some ballers in this room. Next podcast. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay, so we're ready to serve it up, Chef? Yes, we're gonna serve a little uh, chimichurri, which is an Argentinian steak sauce. Okay. But for the Filipino twist, we did a little fish sauce in it. It's uh, excellent. It. Okay, Instead nobody's of... allergic, right? You good? Okay. No, Mr. McDonald's allergic to fish. Okay. <laughs> He's not tasting it. He's not tasting this one. Okay. He's not eating it. All right, so here you go, guys. Cheryl, Dominic, you guys have your fork. And tell the truth, Cheryl, you go first. Grab it. Oh, you, you, nice yeah. you got vinegar, okay. you got the Slice into it now, Cheryl. You know how to slice that you know pork I'm belly. Getting I'm getting that. <laughs> you know I'm getting that. Okay, come on, Martha. There you go, okay. While you're chewing, Dominic, you go ahead and chop down too. 
I'll give you time. There, there you go, Dominic. Dig in. Dig in, yeah. Now, this is on the menu, too. I'm going to let them chew for a minute, but this, this is on the menu. This is on the menu, and then we have the craft special tonight for this week, yeah. Okay, your opinion? I think I'm going to sleep for this one. <laughs> <laughs> I got really you. Good. That's no really problem. Good. Can you cook, Chef? Come on, where's my husband? You, oh yeah, okay, yeah, you can cook. Okay, down. Excellent. Yeah? Excellent, yeah. You're not, you're not just saying that? No, no, I love it. I love everything you're not, everything <laughs> there. <laughs> but you can not get told right now. Okay, well, get but it, Cheryl so. wants to finish it. Are you kidding? Okay, guys, thank you so much. Chef Eric, thank, thank you, so you. Thank you so much, guys, appreciate it. Lady Gaga. The Las Vegas Residency, opening December 28th at Park Theater at Park MGM Las Vegas. 23 Enigma Nights, plus four jazz and piano engagements. Get tickets now at Ticketmaster.com. Lady Gaga, Enigma. Find out more at GagaVegas.com. And yes, I really do have an afro under all this hair. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, once again, one of the things that I love about what I've done over the years um, here in Las Vegas and uh, before I even got here was paid attention to the community that I lived in, paid attention to the need, and paid attention to those who are able to give. And the bottom line is, again, to whom much is given, much is required. So, fast forward to the last, I think about four years of my career, I ended up meeting uh, a woman by the name of Cherie Corneille. And Cherie is a retired parole officer in the Clark County um, uh, penal system. And she said along the way, she ended up learning what the root of the problem was when it came to kids being in the system because she dealt with the adults. And the thing that she mentioned that kind of struck me, and I'm sure a lot of you who are parents to young children, as my husband and I are to D'Artagnan, is that she said, Monica, if we could only catch them at this young age before they fall off the deep end, she said, I know I can save them because I see what happens when no one cares. So I said, okay. So we started talking, talking a little bit more. I started having her on the show. So she would come on the show and I said, Cherie, you need to talk about Real Talk. That's the name of the organization, it's called Real Talk. And what happened was when she retired, she said, I'm gonna start an organization and I'm gonna have kids come to this center. Um, and it's a community center. I'm gonna have them come to this center once a month. We're gonna talk, we're gonna have celebrities come in, we're gonna have athletes come in, we're gonna have community leaders come in and talk to them and let them know that they have major options, right? They don't have to go you know, to the wayside. So she invited me to attend as a guest speaker. And again, this has been, I think my son was about eight, so about four years ago. So my family and I, we arrive at this center, and just imagine, I was in the back of the room, and the kids were sitting up here. So there were kids up here, and they were like teenagers like in that third row, but I couldn't see the front row clearly. So when Cherie called my name, I started walking up the side here, up to the front. And when I tell you, I darn near fell to my knees in tears. The first two rows were full of eight, nine, and 10 year olds, already in the system. Cherie told me that one of the kids had taken a pencil and shoved it in the ear of a classmate. These are the kinds of kids she is saving. This is a serious organization, I'm telling you. She really, really needs help. So I said, I tell you what, I'm gonna have you on the show as much as I possibly can because I know a lot of fancy folks. <laughs> I call my friends fancy folks who have a lot. And I joke about it, but I'm very serious because it could very easily be one of our kids in here. And we all know that one wrong turn, one wrong encounter. Christy, you know, news director, right? I know as a journalist, being in the thick of it all, one wrong move and these kids are gone, they're done. But with people like Cherie, there is help out there, there is safety. And she can save and has saved a lot of them. Problem is her organization is not very well known here in spite of the fact that she was on the show many times and she doesn't have a lot of funding. I watched this woman, just like a lot of teachers in our community, pulling money out of her own pocket 
She's a single mom, two kids, but she's determined. She will not give up. So one day she was on the show, and I asked her, I said, Sheree, how are things going? She said, well, it's still a struggle, but you know me. I said, yes, I know you. I know you're not going to give up. You're not going to give in. And something, and I, I know it was the Spirit of God that said, don't let her off this show without making a plea for her. So, Christy, you were there that day. <laughs> so, before, I think my, my producer was counting me down. I had about 30 seconds. I said, you know what? To all of my fancy friends, all of these corporations here in Las Vegas, all these casinos, this woman needs your help. And quite frankly, she needs your money. Because the kid she saves might be the kid who is going to carjack you, break into your home, and we all know it could even get worse. Right? This is the woman who is in our community pounding the pavement to prevent these kids from becoming criminals. About a week later, Cherie called me and she said, Monica, you're not going to believe what happened. I said, what happened? She said, I got a $20,000 donation. But that only helps her break even. She's saving kids, picking them up at night, buying them clothes, pant just all kinds of hygiene products. She's doing it. So I wanted to introduce you to her, one of her uh, co-creators of uh, Real Talk, because Cherie, being the parent that she is, she's a single parent, her daughter had a baseball game, and they are off in another state, I believe it's California. So she sent her, her co-creator, Christine Brown. Christine, come on up here. Christine is a little nervous. Give her a round of applause, folks, please. <laughs> come on up, come on over. So Christine, tell everybody what you do, how you guys got started real quick for me. Hello everyone. Um, so I am in the Youth Volunteer Coordinator for Cherie. So I keep track of all the youth and I make sure that they're doing the activities that they're supposed to be doing um, as far as volunteering mm -hmm. and, um, and they continue to get funny. Yeah, yeah. What are some of your most memorable moments? Because I know Cherie and I have had the conversation when it comes to you guys saving these kids, some of the best stories that you've had. Well, you know, it's really personal because um, not only am I a single parent, I'm also, like I said, her youth volunteer coordinator. So I help other people's children, and I consider those children to be my babies. Yeah. So when I'm there helping her, it's just, it's just awesome how these kids will come up and tell you some of the things that they go through right in the neighborhood and just trying to help them one at a time, one at a time. But it's called Change One, and it's just changing one kid at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else you want to say to our, our audience here? So Cherie is a awesome person. She's doing everything that she can do. We still have not received any grants. So everything that we get is just has, has just been donations from private people, mm -hmm. just like you guys. That's where we're getting our funding to help these children. To, to put them in boxing, to put them in football, to put them in horseback, yeah. riding, horseback riding, um, football, you know, yeah. baseball. Mm -hmm. Sports, period, Sports. yeah. Cooking. So, cooking. Piano. If somebody wants to find out more about Real Talk, how do they get more information? So they can go to the um, website called Real Talk Youth YIP, which is Youth Impact Program, okay. and you can get more information there. Okay, tell us that website one more time. Real Talk. YIP, which is Youth Impact Program, mm -hmm. and then you'll get more information from there. Yeah. So thank you for being here this evening. I really, really appreciate it. But I had already told everybody about Real Talk. I knew about that. Yes. Yeah. And, we thank and you, you know, I love surprising people, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I have something for you. Awesome. This is my husband, Delano. I'll let you talk about it. Hi everyone, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Delano Jackson. Um, <clears throat> what we wanted to do here this evening was kind of continue the work that Monica has been doing in the community. Uh, as you all know, Monica was uh, at one point in time the face of the Surprise Squad. And that was a very, very warm and giving organization. And Monica was very proud of the work that she was doing because mm -hmm. she was able to get out in the community and help people. You know, people that are living in our community, in our city, Right. In our valley that don't know where their next meal is coming from, don't know if they're going to have heat in the house, so forth and so on. So uh, part of the MOJ show uh, will consist of uh, four segments. And the 
one of the segments, segments that we are presenting to you right mm -hmm. now is called Harmony. Mm -hmm. Harmony is spelled H-A-R-M-O-N-Y. Uh, we call this segment Hope and Relief Mission. Mm -hmm. And we would like for you to be the first recipient of a donation from the MOJ show awesome. as a Hope and Relief Mission. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, again, all of this was my husband's idea, so I wanted him to do the presentation. He does not like coming on camera. <laughs> That's actually why I did it. Anyway, but once again, thank you, Christine, and give Cherie our love. She's off being a great mother, as yes, usual, is, right? Yes, so hopefully this will help you guys out. It certainly will, and keep being God's blessings. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Real talk, folks. Check it out. Worker is going to put all this together and we're going to launch it. So thank you all. Thank you.